again, the idea is if they already don't believe the truth and there's no chance of them repenting anyways, right. why does he have to go this extra mile and right. send this, this spirit in to delude right. them? This is It this, says, so they will not believe, right. <laughs> so as they in, will believe in what is false. As in there's a possible world where they possibly would right at the end, right. and God wants to ensure that because most of, the, most of their life they didn't, that they don't deserve to be saved right at the end of their life. In order that they all may be judged. Right. This is, Making sure that there's no way they escape the wrath to right. come. Mm-hmm. If I have cranky skepticism and atheism, how do I know whether that's actually God working through me to make me do that? That's one of the difficulties of life. Like I, would never, I could just be a puppet and uh, apostate puppet on God's strings. <laughs> well, I think, do, don't you have a bumper sticker, Dave, that says, uh, how, how dare you question your God in making me not believe in him? Or Probably. I have a lot that's of bumper awesome. stickers. Yeah, you do. Yeah, something to that effect. <laughs> yes. Once you can change your thoughts and make you think stuff, you have no way to know whether it's you thinking yeah, exactly. that or God thinking God that. is the puppet master. So. He, he's, um, he's Where does moral responsibility going. go here? Pull yeah. the string! Pull the string! Edward fans. Okay. <laughs> so God is active in this deception. Uh, if, if, uh, if there's any doubt remaining... We could have just cut the crap and resolved this one earlier because there are some pretty unambiguous passages where God is directly lying to people. Mm. Uh, one example is, well, Jesus, if they consider Jesus to be God, we'll just throw this one in for fun. John 7, verses 1 through 10, in verse 8, Jesus says uh, the, the, the disciples are going to be going to a festival, but the Pharisees are on the lookout for Jesus. They're planning on arresting him. Right. It's actually and, Lilith Fair where they <laughs> or Bonnaroo. I'm not, I'm not clear on that. And Jesus says uh, in uh, John 7, verse 8, that I'm not going up to the festival because my time has not yet fully come. And what he means by my time has not fully come is I'm not ready to be captured by the Pharisees or anything yet. Right, right. Um, verse 9, after he had said this, he stayed in Galilee. However, after his brothers had left for the festival, he went also, not publicly, but in secret. So you have Jesus engineering this thing where he's he's lying to his own disciples. Undercover to, Jesus. Yeah. It's and like then, that undercover boss show <laughs> where the bosses dress up like they're not the bosses. And but, but with Jesus. Like Jesus. You know? <laughs> Might seem like a pretty innocent lie, but that is God lying. Right. I think mm-hmm. that fits the he bill. He is not telling the truth in there. You have a, another uh, clear instance where God is commanding somebody to lie. Is in First Samuel sixteen one through five. Uh, Samuel, of course, it wants to anoint a, a new king. Uh, Saul has lost his his right to serve on the fr- on the throne, but. Samuel is, of course, scared that if he goes to anoint a new king, he's going to get attacked. And the Lord said to Samuel, here's uh, starting in 16, verse 1, the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? I've rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out, and I will send you Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king amongst his sons. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you uh, what you shall do and you shall uh, anoint for me the one whom I name you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, do you come peaceably? And he said, peaceably, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. So, he yeah. is uh, giving he's giving uh, Samuel a lie to tell to them uh, mm-hmm. so that so that he can so his real purpose will be concealed. Right. Now again, the apologist can try to say, well, it's a half lie. I mean, he told them he, he told, told someone them, else to lie for him. It's right, not God right. lie. Right. And and he he told you know Samuel could have still made that sacrifice and mm-hmm. and uh, so so it wasn't technically a lie. But the clear, it's, it's really clearly semantic. the aim is right, to right, deceive right, yeah. here. Uh, there's, yeah. there's no other the explanation. The ends justify the means. That's, that's what's yeah. going on here. Right. Yeah. So, sorry, God is a liar, which should create serious problems for any kind of theology. Because, again, it brings up questions of God's trustworthiness. Can right. we trust his revelation? All right. 